Winter comes to the American far north. As temperatures plummet, a common wood frog seeks some shelter. But soon the ice reaches even into its protected burrow. The frog's breathing slows. Finally, its heart stops. Slowly, it too freezes. Solid. Yet when at last spring sunshine begins to warm the earth, a small miracle occurs. The frog thaws, and thanks to its specially adapted cells, its body is undamaged. Its heart jolts back into life. The frog has pulled off an extraordinary feat of resurrection, and now it's ready to reap the benefit. These are the only American frogs living this far north, so they have the pond all to themselves. In the amazing world of animals, there's a lot to be said for being able to survive where others cannot. From burning desert to freezing polar ice, from high above the earth to deep below the sea, animals have managed to colonize every inch of the globe. They've done it by adapting to the most extreme of conditions in ways that truly defy the imagination. Those that have succeeded have won themselves the advantage of reduced competition, although it may sometimes come at a heavy price. The air is the domain of the birds, but the further away from the ground they get, the greater the challenge. High in the peaks of the Himalayas, climbers have been known to report seeing birds flying high above them. It turns out that these are bar-headed geese, migrating from their breeding grounds in Tibet to India, right over the top of Everest. They're flying at an altitude of more than 9,000 meters, where oxygen is in very short supply. Their flight should be impossible, so how do they do it? As they fly, their wing beat moves the ribcage in a bellows-like action, drawing air through a unique system of air sacs. These provide vital reserves of air, pushing it into the lungs, where the blood absorbs oxygen at a super-efficient rate. These mechanisms enable the goose to extract just enough oxygen from this thin air to keep going. And keep going they must, as with temperatures at minus 55 degrees centigrade, only their continual movement prevents them from freezing solid. Because they can survive these extreme conditions, the bar-headed geese can take advantage of this perilous shortcut and, blown by the following jet stream, make their thousand-mile journey in 24 hours. Their epic twice-yearly journey enables them to escape both the summer monsoons and the winter storms. Bar-headed geese put all their resources into keeping their wings moving. But there's another high flyer that prefers not to beat its wings at all. The Rupal's griffin vulture weighs as much as 9 kilograms. Yet it's able to keep its considerable bulk high in the air for 8 hours a day, scanning the African plains for food. It's become a master of fuel-efficient flight. The vulture does it by using the power of thermals rising columns of warm air to support its weight. By skillful adjustments of its three-meter-wide wings, the griffins explore every air current and glide along using hardly any energy of their own. One bird was observed to glide 75 kilometers without beating its wings once. Yet there is one animal that beats both the geese and the vultures when it comes to extreme air travel. And it's an unexpected one. Young sheet spiders, soon after they hatch, climb to the top of nearby grasses and start to produce long, gossamer fine threads of web, which are caught by the breeze. As the thread grows, the tug increases. Then the spider lets go of the grass and is lifted into the air. Then it's up, up, and away. Once they're aloft, 
Rising currents of warm air take these tiny, almost weightless creatures higher and higher, as much as 10 kilometers above the Earth. It's so cold that their tough exoskeletons acquire a coat of ice. The spiders are able to exist in a state close to suspended animation as jet streams carry them hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles, often as far as another continent. Then, pressure, climate, and wind changes float the spiders back down to the Earth, frosting as they go. Their travels have helped these spiders become the most widespread in the world. We know them as money spiders. Both the bar-headed geese and the money spiders have developed ways of dealing with exceptional conditions. It's always an advantage if you can find a way to survive where others can't, as the spectacle Ida Duck has discovered. For a long time, these Arctic birds were a mystery to naturalists. Widespread around the Arctic lakes in summer, in winter they seem to simply disappear. Now they've been found, hundreds of miles out to sea. The entire population of spectacled eiders gathers in half a dozen or so huge flocks surrounded by sea ice. Crammed together, their body heat and constant movement prevent the ice encroaching, creating a pond that gives the ducks access to the rich food supply in the waters below them all winter long. For solitary birds, the problems of battling the cold must be approached differently. The Andean hill star hummingbird succeeds against crippling odds. It spends its days feasting on nectar in the warm sunshine, but after dark, the mood of the high mountain plateau changes, and the tiny hill star must endure nights of savage cold. It's found a way. As evening approaches, the hill star settles into a protected niche and shuts down for the night, literally. Its heart rate and breathing slow down, its body temperature drops. It's in a state of near hibernation. Soon after dusk, the temperature has dropped to minus 20 degrees. Now it's a risk against time. Even with these adaptations, the hill star can only survive like this for a limited time. Its roost is chosen to face the rising sun, but by the time the night is over, the hill star will be perilously close to death. Just in time, the sun begins to heat the little bird's body. Its heartbeat accelerates until it's back to normal. A quick pre-flight check, and it's off again. It's often the case that the best food supplies can be found in uncomfortable places. Cold seas, for instance, offer rich pickings to any animal able to stand the temperatures. For larger mammals, who always have a problem keeping warm, the answer is insulation. Lots of it. The walrus is very fond of the clams that proliferate in the icy waters of the Arctic, but it can only enjoy them by virtue of its thick overcoat of blubber. But you can't have too many strategies to combat the cold, and walruses have evolved the ability to reduce the blood flow to their skins to minimize heat loss. A strange result of this is that walruses emerging from the icy sea are almost white, whilst those who are sunbathing on the beach have turned a warm, rosy brown as the blood flows back to the skin. The beach looks for all the world as if it's full of blushing walruses. Another mammal, in fact the largest carnivorous land mammal in the world, has conquered the challenge of the Arctic cold with a stunning repertoire of devices. The polar bear carries a layer of insulating fat, although not nearly so much as the walrus. But on top of this is an extraordinary waterproof fur coat. The hairs are hollow, trapping air, and insulating so efficiently that, as this thermal imaging film reveals, heat, shown here as orange or red, is lost only from the bear's feet and his snout. And the bears have a secret. They're really brown. That fur is translucent, focusing the sun's rays onto the dark, heat-absorbing skin below while still making the bear appear white and thus able to blend into its icy landscape. Exceptions, the polar bear's fur is. Another animal has one even better. Sea otters, living off the west coast of Canada and North America, are mammals with fur, but they spend virtually all their time in the water. They even sleep in the sea. And to stop themselves from drifting away on the currents, 
They anchor themselves with weed rooted on the ocean floor. It makes a perfect bed. With their webbed feet, the sea otter swimming skills second to none. But their glory is their fur. It's the densest in the whole animal kingdom, with more hairs per square centimeter than on a human's entire head. Its efficiency as an insulator comes from the air trap within it. And for an animal tools in water, keeping that vital air constantly in place is a tall order. Grooming is vital, and includes hours of simply blowing into the fur to keep the air volume up. Young sea otters' fur is so buoyant that they're virtually unsinkable. They bob gently on the surface while their parents go about their business nearby. The otters are expert divers, picking shellfish from the seabed and cracking them open on a conveniently placed flat zone. It takes some persistence, but the rewards are sweet. But there are times when all of nature's best solutions are hardly enough. In the bitter Antarctic winter, emperor penguins have little choice but to incubate their eggs in the toughest, coldest conditions on the planet. Here the males, whose responsibility this is, stand virtually immobile through more than three months of searing gales and temperatures as low as 80 degrees below zero. They have their layers of insulation to protect them. In the end, their only hope is to huddle together, sharing their heat and insulating each other with their bodies. Slowly they shuffle around, so that each penguin takes his turn on the frozen outside edge of the circle. Together, they survive the harshest place on Earth. It's a surprising fact that despite containing 70% of the world's fresh water, the Antarctic is a desert. It receives only slightly more moisture each year than the Sahara. But that's about as much as it has in common with most of the world's deaths. Most of them are not only dry, they're very hot. And that presents animals with a different set of obstacles to overcome. If any animal is master of the world's hottest places, it's a camel. The camel's famous hump stores not water, but fat, leaving the rest of its rangy body to radiate heat. Its wide feet, supported on soft surfaces, while thickened soles protected from the burning sand. But the camel's other useful adaptations are less obvious. Sandstorms are a regular trial of desert life. The camel can cope. It has nostrils that close to keep out the stinging blast, and those luxuriant eyelashes are not just for show. They keep sand out of the eye. For all desert dwellers, water is the key to survival, and camels know how to make the most of it. They can drink enough water in 10 minutes to keep them going for more than 100 kilometers of walking. Deserts with their twin problems of heat and dryness seem the very epitome of lifelessness, yet on closer inspection, it's clear that the amazing world of animals is not so easily defeated. Hot sand can be dealt with. And so can steep sand dunes. Here in the Nabi, two ants go out to forage, their long legs holding them a little above the baking surface of the sand where the temperature can reach a blistering 60 degrees. But they should be careful where they walk. It only looks empty out there. The ants have fallen victim to the spore spider, who has been up and about early, spinning its web on the ground and weaving in grains of sand to make a blanket cover. Safe from the sun, 
It spends its day lying in wait for its unsuspecting prey. Fennec foxes happily go out in the desert heat. Those huge ears are a very efficient cooling mechanism. Blood circulates near the surface through tiny capillaries, radiating heat to the outside and keeping foxes' core temperature down. And those generous ears have a more conventional use as well. If there's a beetle larvae moving in the sand, the fennec fox will hear it. For some, sweating can be answer to cooling down. The disadvantage is that it uses precious water. The springbok compensates for this with an astonishing ability to extract moisture from the most meager diet. It can, if necessary, survive without drinking at all. A cooling breeze will always help defeat the heat even if, like this hemsbok in a narrow desert, you have to trek to the crest of the highest dunes to catch it. The wind here blows in from the Atlantic. At dawn, the warm, damp breeze is transformed into fog as it crosses the cold coastal current. A vast blanket of mist rolls steadily across the desert. The moisture's air. You know how to use it. The Tenakara beetles do, and they toil up the sand dunes to take full advantage. The beetles angle their bodies to collect the precious drops of moisture. For them, just a drop or two will do. But for the elephants, who need many liters of water to survive, airborne moisture is not the answer. The elephants of the Namib have a different solution. There is water in the desert, but the sources are hidden and may be many miles apart. The elephants are constantly on the move, but they must plan their route with care. If they make a mistake, they would die from thirst. But they don't. The elephants seem to have a mental map of all the spots where food and water can be found and trek across the featureless desert to reach them. It's vital knowledge, passed from generation to generation. But water courses change over time, and scientists have discovered that these elephants have an additional, unique talent. They can detect underground vibrations and seismic rumblings through the soles of their feet. So the minute disturbances of underground water courses can be heard and interpreted. Desert elephants' feet are larger than those of their savannah cousins, which increases the surface across which signal can be received. Using this unusual sense, the elephants can constantly update their routes. This family has traveled 12 hours to reach a dried-up riverbed where underground water seeps close to the surface. 